Last Friday, there was a beautiful sunrise, and when I went outside, I saw it, and immediately I thought, I, I've got to capture this moment. I've got to share it with others. I, I ran inside to grab my phone and, and get my, uh, my wife and kids up and out to see this beautiful, uh, this beautiful sight. I, I took a picture of it. Here it is. Uh, isn't it wonderful? How do you describe the indescribable? How do you explain the, the unexplainable? It's beyond our capabilities, to be honest. A, a picture like this, I just can't describe it in words. It escapes us, and yet we still try. We see a glorious sunset or sunrise, and we want to describe it to someone who wasn't there. Uh, without the picture, I, I could have talked about hues and shading, about cloud formations and transitions. And when I'm done, you might say, oh, well, that sounds nice. Nice? Are you kidding me? It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was mind-blowing and heart-stopping. And, and you think it was nice? Whenever you tell people about the landscape that you saw or a concert that you heard, uh, tell them about an intimate moment with the, with the love of your life. And if you're lucky, they'll smile and say, ah, nice. Or something equally deflating. Because it doesn't transfer. You can't capture the moment and pass it on to someone else. No matter how good you are with words, we can't describe the sight we saw or the experience that we experienced in a way that transfers to someone else's heart and mind. The best that we can hope for sometimes is that the description that we offer will provide someone to recall a similar moment that they've had in their own lives. Association sometimes works. They could say, you know, I, I do remember that sunset that I saw in the cabin by the lake that one day. And, and, and then you're the one that begins to disconnect. You're like, oh, well, that must be nice, right? You can't describe the indescribable. And yet this is a little bit of what we're doing today during this worship experience. The creator of the universe is born as a human baby. What? Consider the shepherds. They, they returned from seeing the baby praising God for all they had heard and seen. It doesn't say that they understood what they had seen. This text doesn't tell us that they were theolo theologizing and coming up with the theory of, of how this exactly came to be. They just had what they saw and what they heard. And that experience changed them. And I hope what you see and hear today is the good news because it has been a year without a lot of good news. We don't have to look very far to find the, the not very good news this year. Climate change brought destruction on the planet in many ways, including the most devastating fire season, wildfire season on record on the West Coast. The killing of George Floyd in May inspired mass demonstrations across, uh, uh, against police brutality across the country. Protesters marched in every state. We spent more time at home than usual, way more time at home than usual. The pandemic led to a sharp economic downturn around the world. More than 1.5 million people around the world have died from COVID uh, complications. Where's the good news in a year like this one. A little bit closer to home, this is the first Christmas for many in our community without a loved one by their side. There's an empty place at the table. There's an empty spot in each of our hearts. Family members and friends are hospitalized or receiving care right now, even as we're connected in worship. We're praying for healing and recovery, but where is the hope? Where is the good news? How do we find light amid the darkness that seems to overwhelm us, that seemed to take taken over this year? We join in a worship experience to discover Jesus who brings light and hope. We listen to the Christmas story. We see and we hear. We imagine in our mind's eye what this means. And, and we don't know exactly how it will impact our life and how it might impact us in the future, but we know that it's good. We light candles. We celebrate. And we remember that God is with us. So let's go back to that very first Christmas over 2,000 years ago to see and hear the story again. The story takes place in a town of Bethlehem, which is located south of Jerusalem. Uh, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, it was about five and a half miles. It's, it's a distance is about as far as driving from where I am standing right now to Gage Park. 
Bethlehem literally means house of bread, which was likely the primary industry at the time of Jesus baking. Bethlehem was a small village and, and was likely not very prominent on any of the maps at that time. This is the place that God chose to be with us, to break into the world, an out-of-the-way little town. The characters, of course, begin with Mary and Joseph. They'd come back to Joseph's hometown. Luke tells us that they were under orders from the Roman government to be there for a census. Now, what this meant for Mary was that she was spending Christmas with the in-laws this year, and this was not going to be a regular visit. You see, we believe that Mary was a young girl, probably 12 or 13 or 14. Joseph was a woodworker, a carpenter. They didn't build houses out of wood at the time, so he probably made uh, doors and farm implements uh, to use in the field and helped to repair them. Nine months ago, before she and Joseph were married, Mary found out that she was pregnant, and her pregnancy was not good news for either of them. When Joseph heard that Mary was pregnant... He decided to end their engagement quietly. He chose the grace-filled option because otherwise she would have faced severe punishment. And the scripture from Matthew chapter 1 tells us what happens next. As he was thinking about this, as Joseph was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. Even now, even in 2020. Here they are, nine months later. And they realize that this baby is going to be born tonight. Mary and Joseph, simple people, making about their everyday lives. These are the people that God came to be with on that night. Jesus was born to Mary that night, and God's messengers, the angels, bring the news of the birth of God's Son to shepherds who are working nearby. Now, it can be easy to romanticize shepherds, but I want to be realistic. In the first century, they were on the lowest rung of the socioeconomic ladder. Shepherds were associated with people who were less educated. They were generally living in poverty. You might own sheep, yet it was different if you were the one that was actually watching the sheep, and especially if you were the one that was watching the sheep at night, the night shift. These were the shepherds that, that couldn't get a job yet during the day, and this meant that even among shepherds, they were among the least respected they weren't the kind of people you invited to your home or to the hospital to hold a newborn baby, at least not straight from work. At their work, they were arms deep in sheep. They, they tended to have kind of a, a, <clears throat> a sheepy aroma about them. They generally weren't welcome wherever they might go. They were outsiders. They weren't part of the community. And this encounter is how the birth of Jesus the good news that would transform the world, God with us, begins to spread. These are the characters that God has chosen to be at work through to share this great news of good joy. So God came to be with us as a baby of an unwed teenage girl. On this night, God came to be with us as a crying baby brought into the world and placed in a feed trough far from home. The company is coming. The most extraordinary guest of all, God's Son, Jesus, is here. God comes to seek those who are lost, to push back the darkness in our lives and our world. Now, there are still stories of tragedy and loss and pain. This year is, is, seems to be a great example of that, unfortunately. But these things are never God's will. 
They are never a part of God's plan. God gives us the ability to make choices. God places us in a world where there is a natural creation. God never intends for us as human beings to choose evil instead of good. Instead of giving in to the darkness that can overwhelm us at times, we can choose to love God and to love our neighbor, to live in the light and to turn toward God and, and not live in the dark. Instead, to shine light into the darkness. It's our choice. We have the opportunity to choose. Every one of us has the same decision to make. Am I going to live in the light? Am I going to live in the dark? God places these choices before us. Even today, we have that choice. Years before Jesus was born, the writer of Isaiah records these words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. These words refer to the birth of Jesus Christ. Of course, they're also about us, aren't they? It feels like I've been walking through a pitch dark land in 2020. Darkness seeming to come in from every side. And this is why Jesus was born. To bring light to folks like you and me. Jesus is born to bring light into the darkness of our lives and our world. Jesus is God with us. God takes on flesh, becomes human for us. Jesus' birth brings light to the world, yet the story doesn't end there. It doesn't end with a baby in a feeding trough. That baby grew up. He called disciples, healed people, demonstrated how to live in the kingdom of God. He showed us how to love God and love our neighbor. And along the way, man, he made a lot of people mad. And the state, the government, executed him for his actions. And in the most beautiful epic portion of the entire scripture, Jesus hangs on the cross and prays, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Can you imagine that kind of mercy and grace and love? But that is still not the end of the story. Because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. He's raised to life to give us hope. He lives and reigns forever and always. And then the church is born through the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world and make disciples of all people. And this story, this great overarching story of all creation and all the world is the one that begins tonight. This pivotal moment of Jesus' birth changes the story and incarnates God's actual real presence. And we have the opportunity now to live as part of this kingdom. This story begins with the birth of Jesus. The good news of Christmas is that God is with us. God is with us in 2020. God is with us in the midst of a global pandemic. God is with us no matter what the circumstances are in our lives. We keep going with Jesus. Our guest has arrived to bring the light into, dark, light into the darkness. Jesus enables us to live a life that is real life. We look forward to the day when Christ returns and the kingdoms of the earth shall become the kingdoms of God and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And one day there will be no more sorrow and no more pain and no more suffering for the old will have passed away and Jesus comes at Christmas and brings us a promise for the future. But the promise of Jesus is not just for the future, it is for here and now. God with us is a reality even now, even today. We can live as a part of God's kingdom in the, our everyday life. God invites us to love God and love our neighbor. Our lives and actions can be part of God's work bringing light into the darkness. We can be part of God's light. And no matter what tragedy or loss or darkness you've been through this year, no matter what is real for you even right now, remember that the worst thing that you can imagine is never the last thing. God's love and light are more potent than the deepest darkness that we may face. God brings light into darkness. Jesus brings peace when our lives seem out of control. God's Spirit brings order in the midst of chaos. So this Christmas, welcome the guest. Allow Jesus to come into your home. Choose light. Live life. The life knowing that God is with us. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we confess that there are times when we live in darkness, and we're sorry. 
Thank you for the birth of Jesus to bring great light to shine in the dark places of our lives. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us the gift of love for you and all people today and always. We offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen.